we are set to good to right. go. It is up, please. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you can hear me. Um, so, uh, first of all, thanks, many thanks to the organizers for invitation and for giving the opportunity to present uh, this work, which is done in collaboration with Michele Lupatelli, Daniel Stremer, and Maugaj Taborek, and you can find here uh, the reference. In this work, essentially, we're going to show some results and uh, make some consideration in connection with uh, uh, the modeling of uh, additional jet activity in top pair production at the LHC with special focus on TT bar plus uh, two jet production. Uh, first of all, allow me to, to start with some uh, motivation and uh, introduction, which is always uh, helpful. As you know very well, uh, about one half of the inclusive TT bar sample uh, at LHC is accompanied by uh, additional hard jet uh, radiation, which is QCD radiation. Uh, we have seen already uh, in some talk uh, yesterday in, in the previous session that uh, there are many uh, interesting applications of uh, uh, TT-bar in association with hard jet. It's a broad topic, but for example, even if we restrict the attention to one hard jet, we have seen already uh, that there are, uh, it provides a powerful method to extract top core mass at the LHC, and we have some authors in the audience. Uh, more generally, uh, TT bar plus multi-jet production is also interesting, not only as a signal per se, but also as a background in connection with many analyses. First of all, TT bar Higgs searches with Higgs decay into B bar, which is important, as you know, because it provides direct access to the top uh, Yukawa coupling, and for which TT bar plus two jet is a irreducible background, in particular in the case where the two extra jet are B flavored, because as you can see, it brings the very same final state composition as the signal that we are looking for. Uh, last but not least, from the theory point of view, this is a great process because it's a genuine multi-scale process. You can identify some scales which are very separated from each other. For example, the invariant mass of TT bar and the PT of the hardest leading jet, which are, uh, there can be one order of magnitude of separation. So this is an important test, generally speaking, of perturbative QCD. And it is also important to validate Monte Carlo tools used for the modeling of this process. Uh, even from the experimental point of view, there has been uh, great progress in the last year in, uh, in measurements connected with the bar plus multi-jet. Here we can see the results of a recent CMS analysis, where uh, essentially the, uh, they put the, the attention on the measurement, so to say, of the flavor composition of the bar plus two-jet. In the last year, we have been incredible progress in the development of a very accurate algorithm for uh, uh, flavor tagging. Bottom tagging and more recent even charm tagging uh, has been done with a certain accuracy thanks to the development of uh, new uh, techniques based on deep neural networks. And here is an example of recent outcome where the first measurements of, for example, TT bar in association with the charm anti charm pair has been released together with TT bar BB bar and TT bar plus uh, light jet. Uh, following this kind of measurements, also uh, estimates of ratio, cross-section ratio has been released. And it is interesting to point out that to date, there is a slight tension at the level of uh, uh, essentially the measurement of uh, TT bar BB bar over TT bar JJ ratio, cross-section, sorry, which clearly points possible direction uh, where uh, the modeling uh, should be improved. So it is yet another motivation for looking in more details into this broad topic of TT bar plus multi-jet. Uh, let's now focus on what are the main uh, theory challenge. I try to summarize in a few words. First of all, as you know, TT bar are uh, very short-lived particles, so eventually they decay. So the practical final state that you see and that you should compute ideally is a final state which is genuine multiparticle. When you have many particles of the final state, you have a plethora of Feynman diagrams, generally speaking, contribution to the amplitude that you should compute altogether, uh, and you are forced to do it by gauge invariance, unless you are really considering the narrow width limit. This is what we call full of shell calculation, full complete calculation of fixed perturbative order. There are many contributions there, not only double resonant diagram where two as channel top decay, but also single resonant from the point of view of top and non-resonant, again, from the point of view of top, because even these diagrams are genuinely resonance by themselves. Often, uh, these calculations are challenging when you go beyond the leading order in perturbation theory. So this is not practical unless a very few exception. So for most of the application in modeling in TT bar plus multi-jet, the narrow width approximation is essentially the, the standard. So only the double resonance diagrams are uh, taken into account. 
and the rest is dropped. The point is that even in this approximation, uh, there are a number of resonance structure, resonant contribution to the full narrow width approximation cross section that rapidly increase with the number of external jets that are jets that you are considering. And the, this is just a sketch for n equal to tt bar plus jet, which essentially it's a combinatoric problem. So the two R jets at leading order can be radiated at production level with decays which are, let's say, leading order like, or you can allow to attach this extra radiation also progressively in the decay and leaving essentially the production, uh, so to say, empty. All these contributions are uh, separately, uh, they do not interfere each other, they sum up coherently and they should be taken into account altogether for a full, uh, fully consistent calculation. Of course, they are not all numerically equal, but we will see that at next leading order, the interplay between these contributions is not always uh, intuitive or let's say trivial to, uh, to, to guess. Finally, last but not least, when you go beyond the leading order in perturbation theory, you start to apply to CD correction. And as I said before, in order to be fully consistent, you should apply not only to the production matrix element, but also to the decay. This is important in particular if you have in mind accurate estimate of the full NLO cross section. So important from the normalization point of view. Uh, as I said, these considerations are valid for any TT bar plus N jet, but in the following, we restrict now the focus and we will uh, restrict the attention to the case of TT bar plus two jet, for which I'm going to present some practical phenomenological results. So this is just one slide to show what is the, the theory status at the present uh, of, uh, let's say, analysis which incorporate TT bar plus two jet uh, at least as a subset of the analysis at next to leading order. We have two categories of, uh, let's say, analysis. One is based on the picture of stable top quarks. Stable top quark means that uh, you can get an idea in this way of the overall amount of QCD correction, but still, because the top is tra treated as a stable particle, uh, you cannot uh, say too much about uh, fiducial uh, uh, cross-section. So we have two uh, groups, let's say, of calculation where TT bar plus two jet was also considered in addition with the uh, multiple jets. And uh, uh, in particular in this uh, calculation by Hershey and collaborators, uh, two different approaches of estimating the higher order corrections have been considered, either by uh, estimating uh, uh, um, scale uncertainty bands by standard three point or seven point variation versus the mean low approach. And uh, what the author find is essentially the results are in very good agreement which, uh, among uh, each other, which essentially justify the approach for estimating scale uncertainty bands that we will also consider later in our analysis. And then from the point of view of exclusive final state, you see that the situation is uh, even as well advanced nowadays. We have uh, <clears throat> A matched prediction up to based on multi jet merging with the MEPS at NLO approach, which merge up to TT bar plus two jet sample at next leading order QCD. And uh, more recently, uh, also uh, electroweight contribution have been started to be incorporated in some approximate way, but sufficiently accurate, 1% uh, according uh, to, the, to the author, at least for the samples characterized by uh, lowest jet multiplicity, whereas the uh, subsequent uh, jet multiplicity are modeled at uh, uh, leading order accuracy. So uh, this is more or less a uh, uh, picture of the current status. Now, what I would like to elaborate, at least in some simplified word, just to introduce, uh, what are the, the strengths and uh, possible uh, uh, weaknesses, or at least uh, directions where to improve the current state of the art, I presented this sketch. So we have seen that the state of the art from the point of view of Monte Carlo simulation is NLOPS, with multi-jet merging. So this is just a, a, a schematization of the fact that you are merging TT bar plus zero, plus one, and plus two jets. The jet is considered at production level, which means that at this stage, these jets are modeled with full next to leading order accuracy. Then, of course, you have to let the top decay, okay? The top decays are considered in this kind of uh, state-of-the-art modeling using uh, leading order decay from the point of view of matrix elements. Uh, of course, including spin correlation into the game. And finally, the parton shower revolution is uh, considered uh, both at initial state and final state radiation. And I label here JPS to just stress that this extra radiation is modeled in the parton shower approximation. What is interesting, what I want to stress is that in the present state of the art, 
essentially all the radiation which is emitted at the level of top quarks is generated in, in, in this approximation. Now, this is great because the parton shower we know that is uh, uh, important not only to fill the gap between uh, parton level language and particle level language, which is the experimental language, uh, but also to incorporate you know, these uh, logarithmic uh, effects uh, of soft and collinear origin. Where the parton shower approximation is not optimal, we can say is in the modeling of how to say the hard corner of the phase space of this emission. In other words, all the, the set of uh, hard recoil effects, let's call them this way, connected with this emission. So in order to improve this, clearly uh, some input from matrix element is, is required. So this is one possible direction to improve the modeling. At this point, I would like to underline some interesting question. Uh, broadly speaking, I collect in three categories and we will try to at least uh, uh, provide some answer to part of them. The first question is, uh, to what extent do QCD correction to top decays impact fiducial estimate of next to leading order cross-section? This is a problem that is genuine normalization problem from the point of view of distribution. The second question is, which are the phase space region which are most sensitive to the hard jet radiation of top decay? This is mainly a question which involves shapes of distribution. And then a third question, which I put in parentheses for a more simple reason that at the moment we don't have a full answer yet. What is the impact of full of shell effects on TT bar plus uh, two jets or multi-jet in, in general? Unfortunately, uh, we don't have a yet calculation of full of shell uh, um, matrix element for TT bar plus uh, any kind of jet. We only have this calculation for B flavor jets. So for TT bar, BB bar, we can have an answer about that. And the answer in very short is that these uh, genuine off-shell effects are very small, generally speaking, at the level of a few per mil. For most observable of interest for standard model analysis, they are even negligible differentially. But for BSM analysis, where you are, might be interested in considering some threshold observable, of course, they must be included. Otherwise, the existing uh, theoretical accuracy of a double resonant uh, approximation within the narrow width limit is doing already a very good job. Uh, still, TT bar BB bar has a different, uh, how can I say, dynamic with respect to TT bar plus light jet because quarks and gluons a different story. So it is not clear. Uh, that's why I, you know, I put a, a bracket here whether the same behavior will be found when will be will be found when uh, this kind of full of shell calculation will be extended to the calculation of uh, TT bar plus light jet. Now, having given this motivation, let's now set up what are the goals and the aim of the study that I'm presenting. What I'm going to present is a, a calculation of next to leading order QCD of TT bar jet in the dilepton channel using the full narrow weight approximation. Full narrow width approximation, as already anticipated, means that we try to incorporate systematically um, QCD correction in production and in decay, consistently with expansion in uh, alpha strong. And uh, essentially what I'm going to describe is uh, to discuss what is the anatomy of the resonant contribution that uh, uh, constitute, that contributes to the next leading order cross-section, and in particular, what is the interplay among them under different kinematical cuts, because we will see there is not a universal behavior. It really strongly depends on the cuts that you're considering your analysis. Then I will try to outline possible effects of hard radiation of top core decays uh, by means of systematic comparison with uh, the modeling based on uh, QCD correction applied on production only times leading order decay versus the full uh, narrow width approximation. We will see results at the integrated and the differential level. And finally, we will also uh, show some updated prediction on fiducial cross-section ratio. It is also some quantity that in principle can be measured experimentally with great accuracy. Okay, uh, this is the technical sheet, uh, let's say, just to, to, to um, describe some technical feature of our calculation. All the results have been uh, used using the Helak NLO computational framework. As I said, we are working in the framework of narrow width approximation. So no single resonant, non-resonant non contribution are taken into account. We work in next to leading order QCD, as I said, including consistently in both production and decay. And uh, okay, another interesting uh, result is that we have cross-checked 
our result and every single resonant contribution to the cross section using two different subtraction schemes, one which are both implemented in our computational framework, which is the Catani Seymour subtraction and the Nagis over subtraction, completely based on completely different uh, approach, phase space mapping, and so on. And both of them clearly have to be extended to the treatment of subtraction, even from the top quark decay. Okay, now we go to the phenomenological results. Before that, it's important to understand what is the anatomy or the nature of the virus resonant contribution that contribute to the narrow width approximation cross-section. We start from the leading order where the picture is very much simplified and even more intuitive to understand. At leading order, everything is simple because you can have the picture where the two extra jets are produced at production and the leading order, are tri uh, the, sorry, the top core decay are trivial. You can have product, and these, we label these as production contribution. Similarly, you can have situation where jet radiation is uh, uh, generated at the level of top decay. You can have even two jets by the single top. This is just a representative example. Again, we label this contribution as decay. And then you have some intermediate configuration where you have radiation both at the production matrix element and at the decay matrix element. We label this as mix. When we go at next to leading order, this picture gets complicated and maybe less intuitive to understand. Why? Well, you have to add one extra emission, real emission from next to leading order. And you can add in many possible ways, starting from the three basic uh, leading born level resonance structure. You, you might have some configuration which are unambiguously categorized as production where all the jet, including the, the real uh, emission, are, happen at the production matrix element. Similarly, unambiguously, you can have configuration when everything is radiated at the level of decay. But then you have a plethora of resonant contribution, which are, again, of the intermediate uh, category. And it is interesting to see that the same kind of resonant configuration you can get either if you start from a born level production, which is numerically important from the point of view of cross-section, adding real emission in uh, uh, the decay, or from a mixed contribution and leading order, adding one more jet at production. Because we don't know a priori which one is the jet coming from the real emission and which is the hard jet, unless you use some way of uh, sector decomposing your phase space, which we don't, because we work in the philosophy of the Catani Seymour subtraction, we have to trade all of this jet democratically. That means that in order to get finite contribution, we have to include consistently virtual contribution. What I want to stress here is I want to keep in mind for the interpretation of the future result is that because these mixed contributions are inheriting something which is born level production times QCD correction to decay, this contribution will be important numerically. They will be also possibly negative. So as a result, the mix category at next to leading order will have in general a very different behavior with what we expect at leading order. Okay, possibly even negative contribution as we will see. With this, in mind, we can now uh, discuss the phenomenological results. First of all, sorry, this is the setup of our calculation. As I mentioned before, we concentrate on dilepton final state at the LHC. These are the kinematical cuts that we consider on our analysis, simple requirement of minimum PT, centrality, and delta R separation. They are inspired by a recent CMS analysis based on uh, the study of TT bar plus two jets. Here, I want to stress your, to, to point your attention to this kind of cut. This is the delta R separation between the hard jet and the B jet. And I report here two values because we take this as a test case uh, of what happens if you change kinematical selection in order to monitor how the interplay between the resonant contribution changes. Okay, This delta RJB, you can imagine, is a way that if you, if you take a very restrictive cut here, you are restricting or suppressing effects of hard jet radiation from top decay. Whereas if you decrease it, you are populating more and more space. So it is a way to see and to outline possible genuine effect from hard jet radiation from decay. For the scale setting, we consider a dynamical scale, HT, where HT is the scalar sum of the PT of the visible particle in the final state plus PT miss. For the uncertainty, we use standard techniques based on seven point variation. And then for the PDF, okay, we take this NNPDF 3.1 as a reference for our prediction. Fiducial cross-section. Okay, uh, this is what we get. Uh, there are many numbers. I'm trying to drive you through uh, to understand the basic things, uh, you know, the basic lessons that we learn from here. 
first of all, let's concentrate on the full uh, narrow width approximation cross-section. Here you see the leading order, and here you see the next leading order results. By taking the ratio, we can see the impact of QCD correction, which is at the level of 40%, 41 exactly, kind of moderate. We can also check how the scale uncertainty decrease when going from leading order, order 60% to next to leading order, order say 15%. It is not reported in this table, but we have also estimated what is the impact of PDF uncertainty, either by considering internal PDF variation or checking even different PDF set, and we can quantify them at the level of two, 3%. So subleading, let's say, with respect to the scale uncertainty. Then it is interesting to see the interplay of the different uh, uh, resonant contribution at leading order and at next to leading order. At leading order, you see the picture is very clear and even intuitive. Production mechanism nominates 97%, Mix and decay contribution amount altogether to less than 3%. So in principle, they are completely negligible. If we go to the next two leading order, the situation is different because you see that the mix contribution not only increases in size in absolute value, but even changes sign. This is a negative result. And this can be understood as a consequence of what, if you remember the, the sketch that I made before, the fact that the mix contribution at leading order are inheriting something from the born level production times QCD correction to decay. These contributions are negative and dominate or at least drive this kind of effects. Um, notice that this kind of effects was already observed in the case of TTBAR plus single jet production by Melnikov, Scharf, uh, and Schulze more than 10 years ago. And uh, the amount of, uh, let's say, the percent of this mixed contribution was of similar size. They were claiming something like 25%, minus 25%, which is amazing because, I mean, surprising, meaning that even if they were considering very different setup, a very different center of mass energy, semi-leptonic decay. So it is very interesting to see that the picture is quite coherent, even if we add one extra jet. Then the next point I would like to draw your attention in is the comparison between the full narrow width approximation at leading order, so QCD correction to production and decay, against the uh, simpler approximation where the QCD correction are applied at production only, leading order decays. If we compare this number, you can see that they are actually very close to each other, although the scale uncertainty are slightly uh, larger uh, in, the, in the case of leading order decay. That is actually a very good sign, thank you, because it means that at least in these uh, analysis, the imp, you know, there is in, in principle, if you look at this number, there is no a big motivation to incorporate QCD correction to the decay from the point of view of full estimate, accurate estimate of full and next leading order cross-section. But the question is whether, how stable are these conclusions if we change kinematical cuts? In order to study this, what we do is to compare the two different requirements for minimum delta R of JB that I uh, described before. So this is our standard. These are the numbers that we have seen in the previous slides. And this is to see how the numbers change when we suppress less the radiation from top decay, okay? Particular, if you look at the numerical size of the mixed contribution, it was minus 19% before, now it becomes minus 14%. Again, this is not maybe intuitive because one would expect that if you release, you know, if you allow more jet radiation, you would expect that the mixed contribution gets larger in absolute value. Again, this is due to the fact that this is dominated by negative contribution. When you allow more phase space radiation, you are enhancing other kinds of resonant contribution, which are positive. And so there is more cancellation between the two. So in the end, you get some 14%, which is smaller in absolute value, but it goes towards positive, uh, uh, let's say it's a positive increase. Another consideration, which is interesting, is to check what is the impact, you know, the comparison between the leading order decay where the full uh, narrow width approximation. We have seen before in the original setup that it was just two per mil, so negligible. But you can see that when you are uh, enhancing radiative effect, uh, it gets larger, the discrepancy. Now it is at the level of 5%. So this shows that the interplay and the impact, numerical impact on the uh, normalization of this kind of effect is difficult to predict uh, on a universal basis. It really depends and strongly depends up to some point on the kinematical selection. Now, let's have a quick view uh, on, on some differential cross-section. Here, I focus on the observable, which is the HT adronic, so the sum of PT restricted to the, to the adronic object in the final state. On the left, 
you can see essentially uh, the plot uh, that shows the impact of QCD correction on a differential basis. You can see that the key factor, differential key factor is rather stable with our choice of uh, dynamical scale, which is a very good sign or hint of perturbative convergence. Also the size of the uncertainty band is rather stable and on the observed range, all fine. On the left, for the very same uh, observable, this is a way to show at the differential level what is the interplay between the various contribution. Here you can see the production that was this uh, plus 19% on, on the integrated level. And this is the mixed contribution, which is negative. What I want to point it out here is that the contribution and the interplay between the two is not flat over the phase space. In particular, in this region, which by the way, corresponds to the bulk of the distribution, you can see that prediction obtained for a different delta R cut uh, starts to differ. So uh, you can see that these effects are even more enhanced in some region of the phase space. And similarly, for another observable, we take the case of a dimensionless observable connected to jet uh, uh, radiation, which this is the delta R between the two leading jets. Uh, again, you can see if we uh, focus on the plot on the left that the interplay between production and the mixed contribution is not flat in the phase space. And in particular, the bulk of the difference, the gap is maximum or maximal around the delta R3, which is uh, essentially back-to-back -back configuration. Uh, okay, another important thing to monitor is uh, what is the, the comparison, thank you, between uh, leading order decay prediction and full narrow width approximation in a differential way. So we compare here two other kind of uh, observable which are connected with uh, jet activity into the bar plus two jets. This is the PT of the two leading jets, and this is the de delta phi, the azimuthal angle separation. Particular, let's focus on this because I have to speed up, but let's focus on this, on this uh, contribution. What you can see is that uh, the leading order decay, which is in green, the prediction green, starts to depart significantly from the full next to leading order, in particular for small value of PT J1, J2. This is an effect, which is genuine effect of uh, radiation of hard radiation of top core decay by definition, because the leading order decay does not allow. And in order to, to, you know, to, to interpret this kind of enhancement, I prepared this simple cartoon, which sketches in a simplified way. So at leading order, essentially, if this is the transfer plane, PT of J1, J2 equals zero means essentially that these jets and the top are back to back. Uh, while at the, if you don't allow any radiation from the top point of view, this is essentially the only kind of kinematical configuration that allows this uh, zero PT uh, region. If you allow jet radiation from top decay, you have many more kinematical configuration that eventually lead to the similar result. So this is just a schematic way to at least have a feeling why these kind of effects are actually enhanced in this region. What is interesting here to see is that the two scale uncertainty starts to you know, not overlap very nicely in this region. So this is some region very important to look at. Another comment that I want to make it clear, this does not mean that the green one is the present state of the art Monte Carlo, and this is what we can get. We know very well that even in the Monte Carlo at state of the art, there is parton shower, which take into account radiation of uh, uh, top quark. The point in that case is that this radiation uh, is modeled by parton shower approximation. So the naive expectation, but this has to be checked, and this is a great opportunity for uh, you know, trying to make more systematic comparison between different uh, state-of-the-art modeling, the naive expectation is the parton shower will lie in between these three curves because it won't be able to model properly the hard recoil effect, whereas the matrix element description here is optimal. Another question is about concerns about the overall normalization because we have seen that the full narrow width approximation cross-section at next leading order gets negative contribution for the mix. So this is another interesting point that motivates more systematic comparison. Uh, okay, I have to speed up, but the last results that I'm going to show is, as I said, uh, we computed afresh uh, new predictions concerning the cross-section ratio. So by R1 and R2, we mean uh, the cross-section between uh, single jet production versus inclusive TT bar and TT bar JJ versus TTJ. We have all uh, computed this sample uh, uh, individually at next leading order in QCD. And we can see essentially that the ratio is quite uh, stable. The QCD corrections are of the order of 4% in absolute value, even if they change sign when 
uh, you compare R1 and R2. The scale, uh, uh, the scale uncertainty are also relatively small. At next to leading order, they amount to 5%, assuming correlation between numerator and denominator. And the PDF uncertainty, which are not again shown here, but we have computed, they are absolutely negligible at the point of 0.0%. So this is just to show very quickly that these observable have a great potential and they can be uh, in principle modeled uh, very accurately, not only at the experimental level, well, many systematic uh, uncertainty between the numerator and the denominator, if you think it, luminosity, jet calibration, and so on can be canceled, but even at the theoretical level in principle. But this, of course, deserves more investigation, particularly concerning the validity of the assumption of correlation. We leave this for future studies. In conclusion, uh, so we have presented some, uh, the first uh, next leading order computation of TT bar plus two jet with seven leptonic decay in a picture of full narrow width approximation, where essentially jet radiation effects and uh, 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 QCD correction have been incorporated consistently uh, even in um, the decay matrix element in the context of a fixed order calculation. We have seen that at next to leading order, the picture changed sensibly with respect to the intuitive leading order. The mixed contribution is not negligible anymore. It provides a negative contribution, which has a, a certain magnitude. And I uh, summarized the result in this way. So the mixed contribution amount of the order between 19% and 40%, depending on the phase space cut. So this is definitely something that uh, we believe should be monitored uh, more systematically for, in order to get the precise estimate of full next to leading order cross section. And then as an, as an outlook, we plan to apply uh, essentially our computational framework to uh, make also more updated and hopefully more accurate prediction about the cross-section ratio. I think uh, I have to stop. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for this nice presentation and for keeping the time. Um, uh, Sasha has a question. Yeah, thanks for the next talk. Uh, so I have a question about uh, page uh, 25. Um, maybe I missed it, uh, but could you maybe explain why the NLO scale band is so strongly asymmetric? Is it anything special about it? Well, uh, it depends on the... the so if it, essentially, if you plot the scale variation of your cross-section, you know, at next leading order, it has a plateau. Mm -hmm. Uh, it depends whether you, what you define as your central reference scale is sitting on the plateau or is sitting, uh, mm -hmm. okay? Um, in our case, it is basically sitting around the plateau so that by using seven point variation or three point or whatever, essentially all the other one that you are considering for when you take the envelope to define the scale uncertainty band are systematically smaller. So it coincides for uh, different scales. Both if you in... change the scale, for example, if you uh, consider HT divided three, uh, you know, you, you might end up in a more symmetric situation where you are, sit, you know, your central is not on the plateau anymore, is on the slope, let's say, mm -hmm. and then you will yeah. get. But okay. all the results are must be consistent uh, mm -hmm. within scale and certainty. Okay, it's clear. And uh, also a comment about uh, page 28. Uh, when you quote this uncertainty, uh, so the, it should be also uh, an uncertainty from the strong coupling constant, I think, of the order of at least 1%, because it must directly affect this ratio. So you mean in order to the PDF uncertainty, we should vary independently the alpha strong? Because the alpha uh, strong, we I, took it. I think so, because uh, it, it depends what PDF set do you use. But if you take uh, a set uh, which was determined with a fixed value of alpha S, obviously it does not include this uncertainty. So, okay, so you expect by including the alpha strong, you will get something uh, of the same order, or you expect even more? Uh, I would expect 1%, because this is what uh, PDG uh, currently reports, something maybe 0.9%, but okay. it's it, it hard to imagine that it could be half a percent, it should be 1% if it would be weighted explicitly. Okay, sure, Thank we you. can have a look. Thanks. Other comments or questions? Um, Massimiliano has one. So I have a curiosity. So this is a two to eight. Yes. Uh, so, I mean, if I want to do it off shell, if, uh, if I want to do the full off shell calculator, I mean, what, what is, uh, do you think it, 
it's beyond the current. Uh, uh, technically, I mean, conceptually, uh, you know, everything should work. But in practice, to, to, to in uh, practice, imagine to do it, it's, it's not uh, at all trivial. The multi-gluon uh, channel is the most complicated one, of course, because it has a most complicated core structure. Uh, I'm not saying uh, it's impossible. I mean, uh, most probably with the modern computational framework like Recola, maybe it will be easier to tackle this calculation. Uh, from our point of view, it really depends how the calculation is organized, how the software organizes it. From our point of view, it's also um, it requires a certain organizational memory in order to organize all the color decomposition. So I'm not saying it's impossible, but it will take some time and the CPU resources, which are not infinite. Okay. okay. Um, 